David was such an interesting child. When he first told me that God talked to him, he was four years old. And that was when he told me that my girlfriend was going to have another little girl. I said, David, how do you know she's going to have a girl? He said, I asked God. God told me. And she did have another girl. And uh, this was kind of the beginning. I asked him once, I said, how, how does God talk to you? And he looked at me like, what's the matter with you? Doesn't God talk to everybody? He said, you know, he just comes into my mind and I understand. I did a little bit of a double take, but I said, oh, that's interesting. I never ever questioned or made any comments. I just listened to this boy. So David, when God talks to you, how do you know it's God? I've never thought about it before because I've always known it since the time I was little. My son had a communication with whatever we call the Almighty. But that was all right with me. I never questioned him. I never asked him questions about it. I let whatever he had to say come freely from him. When he was um, in the third grade, um, he had a very dear teacher. Her name was Mrs. McGuire. At that time, uh, teachers did not have to accept a child in a wheelchair uh, into their classroom. And uh, Mrs. McGuire accepted David. She wanted him in her classroom. And they had a very close association. She was very ill. I know it was with a great heart that he must have prayed for her. But he didn't call me and he didn't call me. And I, he generally did. And finally I opened the door and asked, David, are you all right? And he just, his little head was bowed. And I went over to him and he said, Mama, she's not going to make it. She, she's going to die. There's something I need to tell you. It's about Mrs. McGuire. Miss O'Donnell called. She wanted you to know before you go to school tomorrow. I'm very sorry, but Mrs. McGuire passed away. I need to go. Thank you for letting me swim in the pool, Mrs. Dockey. I never said anything. I, I thought, how in the world does this child know this? I don't know how he prayed. I don't know anything that was said or if it was said audibly or silently. There's so much about this boy that was different, and yet I tried very hard, our whole family did, for him not to be different, for him to have a life and be just one of the guys, one of the boys. And uh, I think we succeeded. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off! It's so cool! Look at how fast we're going, man! Oh, yeah! It was 1959, and we bought the house, and it was Paul Riopel. And I told Paul, I said, okay, I said, we'll buy the house. With one condition, you have to put a pool in this fall. I wanted it for therapy for David. See, that that was the uh, um, that was his main therapy was swimming. He could swim in the pool where he couldn't walk on land, so he was confined to a wheelchair there. But in, in the pool, he was free. Dina was teaching at the shallow end of the pool. She had a class in, and she was teaching uh, that class. Dennis had uh, brought him out to the pool and put him at the far end where the light is, you know, at the deep end, and he was sitting there uh, on the ledge. And David thought that he could swim down to her 
and surprise her. He wanted to go under the rope and, and come up behind her because he could hold his breath a long time. But something happened. He was too weak. He had been six, you see, and he grew, uh, thought he still had the strength, but he didn't. And that's when he, he went down. He was really gone. Well, I, I never prayed so hard in my life, but I prayed that God would let him come to and live. I just, I passed my hand just this way over David's body, and as I passed my hand over his body, he breathed. And uh, he opened up his eyes and he looked, and he said to me, I was almost there. It was so beautiful. Then he sent me back. I was almost there, but he sent me back. Interpreted anyway, but it was something. <laughs>